Alright, get your Bibles out. Turn to the book of Judges, chapter 1. Judges, chapter 1. Before I read that, I was, uh, somebody, I've had several people talk about they were looking for getting them a used car because the you know, new cars are so expensive. And so uh, they were trying to get a used car. And so I had to be running through uh, some information on how to buy a car. I was going to try to help a couple people out. And so I ran across this. I thought y'all might want to see this. Uh, just in case, so y'all will know what's going on in case you go to buy a car and you see the car ad. Here's the car ad. If the car ad claims what I'm getting ready to show you, this is what it really means. Okay, so then you're going to know ahead of time. So you won't get all busted up. Ready? All right, here's how you know it. Ready? If a car says rough condition, it means it's too bad to lie about. <laughs> That's a bad car. You can't even lie about it. It's so bad. Number two, a parts car. What it actually means is it's beyond repair. <laughs> Remember this when you're buying the cars, right? I got that thing cheap. I had a guy one time tell me, uh, and I was passing an investor. He said, Pastor, well, look out for me today. I got a Chevette for like $200. I said, the Lord didn't bless you, Satan is cursing you. He said, that's impossible. The next Sunday, he didn't come to church to really, really listen. What happened? He said, it broke down on the way to church. And so, uh, uh, he left on I-95. You don't leave a car on I-95. The only thing in the whole car that was worth anything was the tires and that radio. He lost that. <laughs> All right, ready? Immaculate means it's been recently washed. <laughs> Engine quiet if you use 90 weight oil. <laughs> it needs a minor overhaul, which means it needs an engine. <laughs> if it says it needs a major overhaul, phone the junkyard. If it says it burns no oil, it's because it all leaks out. If it says rebuilt engine, what it really means is you just clean the spark plugs. <laughs> if it says drive it away, actually you're saying is I live on the hill. <laughs> if it says drive it anywhere, it means within 10 miles. <laughs> if they say it's a desirable classic, it means nobody else wants it. <laughs> if it says rare classic, it means Nobody wanted it even when it was new. <laughs> yeah. If it says it's been stored for 20 years, yeah, in a farmer's field. <laughs> if it says ran when stored, it means it won't start. So y'all have to write that down in case you're looking for cars to know when you see these things, this is what it's talking about. Amen. Now get your Bibles out. We're going to finish up, get out from under the table. We started it last week. We're going to finish it up this week. I'm not sure where we're going with it next week, but pretty soon we're going to get one further book at it. Amen. Judges chapter 1. Judges chapter 1. God is so good. All the time. Stand for the reading of the word. Judges chapter 1. Everybody got to say amen? If you don't have to say wait. All right, ready? Chapter 1, verse 1. Now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said unto Simeon his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites and I likewise will go with you into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they slew with them in Bezak ten thousand men. And they found Adonai Bezak in Bezak, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And but Adonai Bezak fled, and they pursued after him, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. Then Adonai Bezak said, Three score and ten kings. Having their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table, as I have done, so God hath requited me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Let's ask the Lord for a special touch and anointing. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your word. 
We thank you, God, that we don't have to take this life without you talking with us every day. And Lord, we may not hear you audible, but we can always hear your your word by looking in your voice by looking in your word because that's where you talk to us. Ask you right now, Father, to touch us, to anoint us, to help us to understand your word, to learn the lessons from it, and to stand strong. In the name of Jesus, we love you, and we praise your name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. On the way down, tell somebody, if you're not here after what I'm here after, you'll be here after I'm gone. Tell somebody that. <laughs> I challenge you to tell that three times, real fast. Amen. So now, uh, just a few, just a little few slides from last week just to keep us some continuity going here. Uh, uh, just remember, uh, our potential, God has given every person a potential. Everybody in this church has potential. Did you know that? Everybody has potential. Amen? God wants us a uh, position for success, and our, our, our potential is based upon our position. So, so it's actually where you're sitting, how you sit, where, where if you're, you st your, your stance determines your potential. So uh, our uh, position has four sides, of course. There's spiritual, and then there's mental, there's physical, and there's financial. We talked about that last week, so I'm not going to go back into it, but that's heavy. Uh, you can go to YouTube if you want to see this. It'll be on YouTube. You can watch it. Uh, and also, I can get you outlines of anything that we ever do. All you have to do is ask for it. Amen. So Satan knows that if he can shut us down in any one of these areas, that he can take us out. Amen? So now, so here's the story. And again, this is just a few, just a few slides just to get some continuity. Uh, here's the story. Joshua's dead. They don't have a leader to lead them into the promised land to do what they've got to do. So they ask God. God says, let Judah go. Judah means praise. So you've got anything you do for God, you better lead it with praise. Because if you're not praising, you're going to have a bad time. Amen. Uh, when I go in that cancer center, I can tell you, if I don't go in there and praise, I will have a bad, bad time. Uh, uh, you've got to keep a good understanding of things, which is what the next word means, Simeon, to, to discern. But, but at the same time, you've also got to keep a good attitude about things or you're going to have a hard time in life. All right. So then, there you go after Adonabizak. Adonabizak is his, not his uh, birth name. It's a like given name. Uh, it's an acquired name, and it actually describes his method of warfare. And, of course, his method of warfare is ambush. So it's Lord Lightning. Lord Lightning, okay? So so he comes up, he ambushes the people, but what he does is he seals their defeat. One thing to ambush people is another thing to seal the defeat. So here's what he does to seal the defeat, and we're going we're gonna to talk about two slides, and then we're going to go right into the today's message. But first, he sought to dethrone them. The best way to destroy a kingdom is not to go after a foot soldier, it's to go after the king. So he attacks the one in authority. So authority is attacked. Now don't, so don't, don't wonder why, if you're being a good husband in your home, why you're under attack. You're supposed to be the priest of your home. So know that you're definitely going to be under attack. Wives, you wonder why you may be under attack. It's because you're there to help that husband. And so both of you are going to be attacked very, very hard uh, in church. Those that seek to, to lead the church and to push the church and to help the church, you can believe you're going to be attacked. But again, just in general, he's made us kings and priests. Our, and there's potential there. There's position. It means to operate in a realm of authority and power that deals a deadly blow to Satan. So he wants to remove our potential to fulfill our call. So, so again, the very first thing he's going to do is, just like with this king, he dethroned those kings, 70 kingdoms. Satan does the same to us. He tries to take away our authority. You know, I, I, over the years, there's been times where uh, uh, had had uh, demon attacks. I uh, went to a, went, come. I went one Sunday night. I went to take. Uh, uh, an elderly couple home. When I came back, uh, there was my sons and another guy on the back steps of the church. And I drove up. They were still having an altar service. And they said, come into church, Daddy, fast, fast, fast. There's a demon in the church. Come into church now. And I run into church, and there was this person speaking in all kinds of languages and all kinds of voices. And we had real carpet, almost like this carpet here. And, and the person was pulling their father out of the sanctuary, pulling them out by grabbing the carpet, 
pulling this grown man out of the sanctuary. And I knew what was going on. It was a demonic attack. And, and this, this person it was, it was, was uh, possessed. And, and so I looked over at all my people in the church, and they were, literally were hiding behind the pew, hiding. Hiding. And the father was grabbing that girl by the legs while he was being pulled out of the church. She was halfway out of the church. And he said, please, please leave her alone. Please leave her alone. Please leave her alone. And I thought up and said, y'all, 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 y'all need to stop. And I walked up to her and I asked the father, I said, can you please let me? He says, yes. And so we moved out the way and I turned her over. And when I turned her over and I put her hands down, I started talking to her and she spit in my face. And then some of the, oh, and she spit in my face. My wife put her hand over her mouth. She bit my wife's mouth, my wife's hand. And, and she just started cussing me and telling what she was going to do with me. And I said, I said, Satan, you got to come out of here. We're not playing. you got to come out. Right now, in the name of Jesus, you got to come out. And the devil came out, and the devil came out. She calmed right down. She was awesome after that, after that moment. But that night, there's no telling what would have happened if I hadn't gone back in there. Because they were actually begging the devil to leave her alone, hiding behind pews, and she was dragging a grown man out, holding on to her legs, and she was grabbing a carpet like this. I'm telling you, you got to understand, we've got authority. You can't just back down every time. And that's kind of scary. That was kind of scary for everybody. That I understand. It was scary because some people had never seen that. But I've seen it many times and I knew what was going on. And I knew that I've got authority through the name of Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, so again, you got to remember, we've got, we've got authority. Amen. And more than just uh, than you ever imagined we have in our life. So, so again, the throne. Then the second thing it would do is was cut off their their thumbs or disarm them. That was to remove the potential to grip the sword or to remove the, the potential to grab the word of God. Uh, there's too many people nowadays that are experienced sinners and if they don't feel good, then God's not working for them. I can tell you something. I'm looking at a young lady. I looked at her this morning. I changed her bandage. She was not feeling good. She didn't want me to even mess with her. But she still loves God and she trusts God and she doesn't go by feelings. And when I go in there, I don't go by feelings. I can tell you. I can promise you that. You know, you, you don't go by feelings, you go by faith. Amen? And so, so again, uh, to me, experience centered, that if they don't feel good and God's not moving, that's not correct. God can move when you're not feeling good. Amen? Second, current, or Second Timothy 4, 2 and 3 says, preach the word, the day will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And I talked about this last week, he makes my feet light hands feet. Now, here we go, we're, we're going to finish it off today. So first, he dethroned them. Secondly, he disarmed them. Third, he disabled them. Now, how did he disable them? He cut off their big toes. If you don't think that your big toe has a whole lot to do with, you know, back in, in, in the days when there were slaves, when the slaves would run, and they'd run more than one or two at times, the way they would stop them from running is they would cut off their toes. Why would they cut off their toes? Because if your toes were cut off, then it would affect your bowels. So, again, your big toe allows you to have bowels in your life. If you don't think so, you ain't got to do it now, but when you leave here today, just when you sit down, think about, think about how much you use your big toe. Your big toe is a very vital part of your body. I, if you say, you know, if I, was part of the, if I could choose what part of the body I'd be, it sure wouldn't be a big toe, but I can tell you what, they do make a difference. Amen. So, so your big toe is your balance. He wanted to remove the potential for the king to stand up and fight. Satan wants to take away your ability to stand up and fight him. He wants to do his best to just, just, just wire fire, you know, a uh, big toe amputation. What, what, what's it, what is a, uh, a symptom of somebody's had their big toe amputated? I tell you what it is. They shout today and pat tomorrow. You're on top of the world today, and I'm not talking about, you may be going through something emotionally in your life. I'm not talking about that. If you got something going emotionally, then you can work through it with God's help. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in general, you've got some, you just your whole life is up and down all the time. Up and down, up and down, up and down. It is hard to work with people that are always up and down, up and down, up and down. You know why? Because you never know how to be with them. 
You know, you never know. Are they up today? Are they down today? How do you treat them today? I've had bosses like that. I had to look into them and see, are they up today or are they down today? If they're up, I know I can judge them carry on. If they're down, i got to be serious with them today. You know, uh, if, if they're up, I'll be with them. If they're down, I'm going to hide from them. Amen. Because I know when they're down, there's going to be some bad things happening. And, and so again, if your life is one of this all the time, check your big toe. Because you're losing balance. Our life is a life of balance. I'm not talking about if you've got a chronic pain or you've got a chronic or something mental going on or emotionally going on. I'm not talking about that because that's legitimate. That's like having a cold. You need to treat it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in general. If your life is one like this, then you better check your big toe because I guarantee you that big thick toe has been amputated. Amen? So, 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 we need balance in our life. I like this. Look at this. Ephesians 6, 13 and 14, the Amplified Version. I love this. Therefore put on the complete armor of God so that you may be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that the crisis demands, stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious, so stand firm and hold your you know, I was at Bethany Friday. We went to get get uh, radiation. And I'm sitting out in the lobby waiting for her to get her radiation. And normally, uh, 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 if I got something else going on, I can drop her off for a few minutes. I'll go do what I'm going to do and come back 15, 20 minutes later and pick her up. But this day I felt something different. I better be there. And so, so I got there. And while I was out there sitting out there, they come in and said, Mr. Rankin, you come back here now. And it kind of scared me, you know. I, you know concerned me very strongly, but I said, you better come back here now. And so I go back there now, and I'm right into the radiation room, and she's sitting up on the table, and they got her turned over, and, and they looked at her back and said, you see this? I said, if we radiate her today, we will fry her skin. They said, she can't handle it. It, it, it. Her skin will literally come off her body. We can't do it. Matter of fact, we're not going to do radiation for another week. We're just taking it off. They already gave me the schedule. Here's the schedule. The schedule away. said, no. We got a week break because she can't handle any more uh, radiation on her body. It just won't take. And so we go out in the car, and we're out in the car, and Bethany's going, see, when we started the immunotherapy, we had to stop. When we were doing the chemotherapy, we had to stop because of, because of the side effects. And now we're doing radiation, and, and we had to stop because of the side effects. And, and, and Bethany gets in the car, and she's already tired. She can hardly walk, and she just, she just sits in the car, and she puts her head down. I said, what's up, girl? And she said, Daddy. I said, I know. I know. I said, but just ask me a question. Are you going to stand? She said, yes, Daddy. And I grabbed her hand. I said, because I'll stand every, every moment right beside you. Your mom will stand right with you. You don't have to wonder where I'm going to be. I'll be right beside you standing. And when I have to, I'll lead the way. When I have to, I'll get in the back and let the doctors lead the way. But we will stand. And I said, she had tears coming out of her eyes, but then she started smiling. You know, and of course, of course, uh, uh, had to change all of her regimens, abandoned everything that night. And, and she does go for immunotherapy this week again. But, but again, her back is eaten up. And so I told her, I said, girl, listen, we haven't given up this fight yet. And one thing that helped us up for Ralph dying this week. And so I told her, I said, girl, we haven't given up yet. I said, Uncle Ralph stood and lived seven years longer than anybody that got the same kind of cancer he got. He lived seven years longer than anybody else. I said, you know why? She said, why? I said, because he always stood his ground. I said, I just want you to keep on standing. Don't, don't give up. She said, okay, Daddy, I'm not going to give up. I said, all right, here we go. First Corinthians, chapter 15, or chapter 15, verse 58. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen? Always. Don't stop. If you come too far, that will stop. So, so, so now, he's trying to disable us. And this is the worst of all. Absolutely the worst of all. And I can guarantee you that you know somebody that's doing this right now. And I pray that it's not you, but you know somebody that's doing this. It's bad enough to cut off their thumbs. 
It's bad enough he dethroned them. It's bad enough that he disabled them and disarmed them. But now he did something that was just pure. I know stuff was military strategy. This is just pure meat. He made them gather their meat under his table. In other words, they ate the scraps and stuff left over that nobody else wanted. Or they just ate the and they just ate the stuff that was going to be discarded anyway. So look, look, these guys were used to feasting. These guys were used to having these awesome meals. These guys were used to God doing something very, or there are people doing very special for them. And so now, they're used to the very best. And now, they're forced to be chained under a table to gather their meat off the floor. Lab. I saw Satan trying to do the same thing to us. And I told Beth, I said, we ain't going there. No, we know, there's, we know, we know, we know this is not going to be an easy battle. We know there's going to be a fight every step of the way. We know that. I said, but we're not going to give in. We're not going to give up to emotions. We're not going to give in to this stuff. Yes, it hurts. It hurts all of us. And I'm so sorry that you're going through this. I take it, but I can't. But I'm standing with you. Don't give in. Don't let the enemy debase you. Don't get him eaten off. Get you eaten off the floor from under his table. So now, here it is. Let's watch this. He took away their authority. He took away their grip. He took away their violence. And now, their integrity was attacked. All he wanted to do was humiliate. I've seen Christians that, that they once stood strong. God used them mightily. They had some awesome stuff going on in their life. And now they have been humiliated. They're, 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 they're eating off the floor, so to speak, spiritually. They're just getting scraps. And, and, and this is where Satan wants us. This is how he wants us. Just, you know, as a matter of fact, you can look at it this way. He wants to uh, remove our potential to have self-respect and the will to resist. Listen to that carefully. He wants to remove the potential to stand in our own self-respect and the will to resist. Are you going to let him do that? You see, when you get there, you get blessed. But he says you can be blessed. He tells you you're a nobody. You're nothing. Why are you even trying? He's got control. It's not going to get any better. How many have even heard this stuff lately? I just say give in to it. How many have heard this stuff lately? You're nothing. You're a nobody. You're, it's not going to get any better. because and, and you're going to be blessed when I tell you you can be blessed. Well, guess what? That is a lie. Amen. So we're going to talk about how to get out of it if this thing here will click. Amen. I love the way to stay you go. Ready? What do we do? And you find your life, you've been dethroned. And you find your life, that's a military strategy. If you find your life of being disarmed, your thumb, uh, disabled, your toe. You find all that gone. And you find yourself under Satan's table eating when he says you can be blessed. Then you're going to be blessed. What do you do? How do you get back up on top? How do you get back when everything's falling all apart around you? The Bible says in verse 4, it says, And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites in their hand, and they slew them in Bezak, 10,000 men. And they found out of Bezak in Bezak, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. But out of Bezak fled, and they pursued after him and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. That word went up, and that word caught him means to take by surprise. You know what they did? They took what Satan used against them, the same methods that Satan used against them, and they used them to catch him. Amen? So I said, here's God's strategy. Get ready. Here, here's God's strategy. Here's us. That's a picture of the church this morning. I took that by y'all out there singing praise and worship. <laughs> you don't think so? We're military. We're army. We're bad in the bone. Okay. Number one, recognize the enemy. Know that it's Satan that's coming out at you. Not everybody else, not your in-laws, not 
town laws. Now whoever is Satan that is coming after you, trying to take you down. Recognize the enemy. Number two, recognize the attack. An attack is any situation used or ordered by Satan to sabotage your assignment from God. So again, watch this. Understand that he's going to try to get you the best way he can. Husbands and wives, he will try to get you on each other's throat. If he can, he'll get you some you know, I was talking to Bethany yesterday. Liz and I were talking to Bethany. Bethany weren't listening to what the doctor said, blah, blah, blah. You know, the whole thing. And we're going through. And I looked over at Bethany. And I said, Bethany, you've got to understand. We're all in a very high, high stressed, stressed out situation. We're trying to keep you alive. We're trying to do everything we can to keep you alive. You're supposed to be fighting to keep you alive. And you got to understand, when there's this much stress in this area, there's going to be some tough and some hurt feelings. And so we're not going to walk by feelings. We're going to walk by faith. Because if we walk by feelings, we will, we will actually devour one another. We cannot do this. we got to stand strong and trust God to get us through this. She said, okay, Dad, I got it. I got it. I said, then quit rolling your eyes. How many like this happen? You're talking to somebody and go, how many of y'all ever see that, do you? Okay, now I'm talking to myself. I'm not ready. Okay, well, Bethany can do it really good. She, got, she, got a, she gets an A plus on that one. All right, ready? Recognize that we must be the aggressor. Again, they took his own tactics and went after him. We need to take Satan's tactics and go back after him. Not after each other. Go back after him. Pull together in a united front and understand that God's got us. Amen? That we are going to win this thing. We're not losing. We're going to win this thing. So here we go. Get ready. Proverbs 28, 1 says, The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Wow. Deuteronomy 28, 7 says, Come on up here. There you go. The Lord shall cause thine enemies to rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee from thee seven ways. Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Here it is. Come on over, BJ. If I was to take a picture of one of y'all on your inside, not the outside, on the inside, is that what I'd be looking at? Think about it. It's time to rise up and claim your destiny. I refuse. You know, uh, we were watching, we were watching uh, Family Feud the other night. And the family got three strikes against them. Well, the first time they got a strike, they got the woman never answered. So they go down to the next guy and ask him. And before he ever answered, uh, got another strike. And the third person answered, he got a strike. I looked over at Linda and I said, Linda, I said, how about that? They struck out and had to bat on her shoulder twice. Never even swung. I will go down and swing. I am not going to keep you bat on my shoulder. I'm going down swinging. I know Satan has got a plan. And I know Satan wants to take us down. He wants to take his church down. He wants to take family down. But you know what? You know, this, I'm not going down. I'm going swinging. Amen? I'm going to keep on swinging. I'm not stopping swinging. I'm not going to strike out on my shoulder. Everybody please stand. I used to teach, I used to have some lessons, I used to use life lessons to teach my boys spiritual principles all the time. And when they were playing baseball, I tell them all the time, I'd say, uh, the sin's not striking out, the sin's not swinging. And they said, Danny, what you mean? I said, if you're going to strike out, okay. I said, but I'm not going to be upset with you as long as you're swinging that bat. If you're not in there, and you don't swing and you get three strikes, we're going to have a problem. And early on, there was some problems, but after a while, the boys figured it out. I got to keep on swinging. I got to keep on swinging. I got to keep on swinging. My father's going to have a problem 
if I strike out and I strike out and I swing. And I said, I want you to understand, our Heavenly Father, He knows sometimes we strike out, but He wants us not to that battle to show. Keep on swinging. Keep on swinging. Don't stop swinging. Maybe you feel like you've been dethroned. Maybe you feel like you've been disarmed or debased or, or disabled. God has something today to get you back in there, to get you back into the fight. Step up and get back into the fight. Refuse to stay that way. Get up and let God do what he does best. And that is, he will defend you, but he wants you to get in the fight. Amen. Everybody bow your head and close your eyes. Everybody looking around. I just want to ask. Anybody here feel like you've been any of these things dethroned, disarmed, lost your grip on the word, disabled, lost that big cut of lost your balance? God's got something there. If that, you feel like it's been you and you're ready to get back in there and fight, and every head bowed and every eye closed, would you? Raise that hand and say, pray for me, Pastor. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Now, I want you now, whether you raised your hand or not, but especially you raised your hand, I want everybody just to repeat after me. Everybody, everybody, repeat after me. Satan. I'll say it with me. Satan. Satan. You cannot dethrone me. You cannot disarm me. You cannot disable me. You cannot debase me without my permission. And I'm not giving it anymore. I choose to stand and fight. I'm going to swing. I'm going to fight. And you lose, Satan. And we win. In the name of Jesus. I breathe God's power. In the name of Jesus. I stand in God's strength. In the name of Jesus. I'm not going down without a fight. Now I want you to raise your hands to the Lord. And I want you to start just praising Him. Just praise Him. Father, I love you. I praise your name. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Father. I thank you. Lord, you're awesome. And I thank you for what you do for us. Now, the altars are open. If you want to pray, come on up. You want to pray for anything. doesn't matter what it is. You want to pray, come on up. We will pray with you. God's got this. God's got this. God's got it. God's got this. When you take your natural and you connect with God's super, you have supernatural. Amen. Amen. When I take my natural and I give it to God, he adds his super to it. And it becomes supernatural. And I thank you for it. I'm not swinging in dead air. I'm swinging in Satan. And I'm going to get a direct hit. Praise the Lamb of God. Don't go down. God's got this. Trust him. In the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. Anybody need to pray? Come on up here. Father, you're awesome. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. I thank you, God, for moving in our hearts and moving in our lives. I thank you, God, for keeping us safe. I thank you, God, for just doing a work in us that we cannot do in ourselves. In the name of Jesus, we're not going to go down without swinging. In the name of Jesus, you're in total. 100% control. We love you. We think about it. Lord, nothing but victory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. You're dismissed.